All right. Now I'll go back for Zoom to be full screen as well. Okay. Now, any of you have any questions, problems, issues, concerns we need to address before we get going on today's class? None? Okay. Then, let's go to our whiteboard, because I guess that's where we have to live these days. And we will start there. All right. Now, this mess still shows up in the same place, but I'll move it out of the way now, if I can. Okay. So, let me get this out of the way and get this one as much out of the way as I can. Okay. I'll also move three of us somewhat out of the way okay and then I'm going to scoot the whiteboard over to get maximum whiteboard that I can okay that's about the best I can do I think all right any questions concerns issues problems all right um, where I have us leaving off, we're in Chapter 2, Matrices. We're almost through with 2.2. 2.2 uh, is <clears throat> Properties of Matrix Operations. And we're at the very last example of that last operation. And this was the uh, transpose. And what we're doing in Example 10 is talking about uh, what happens if you multiply a matrix by its transpose? So here is matrix A. Pretty ugly looking A. And matrix A is a rectangular matrix, not necessarily a square matrix. And it's going to be 1, 3, 0, negative 2. And negative 2, 1. Negative 1, I think it is. Okay. Now, I can't remember if I told this class this or not. Maybe Aaliyah heard it yesterday in Cal 2. But I've been wondering why I'm struggling so much writing on this whiteboard. And I finally figured it out. I had never even thought about it before. To write on the whiteboard... I have to hold the button down on my keypad, the left button on my keypad. And then I have to write with my right index finger. Well, of course, that's my problem because I'm left-handed. And if I try to hold the left index, the button down with my right hand, then it's in the way of my writing with my left hand, and I'm all crossed up. So that's why it's taking so long and taking me so much time to get any good at this. I'm not good, no good with my right hand, and that's what I'm writing with. I would never even thought of that before. Okay, so there's the matrix A. And we want to find the product of A times A transpose and see what happens. So can you tell me what A transpose is going to be? And I'm going to write it right here. First, what size is A? You tell me that first. What size is A? It's a... Say again, 3 by 2, is that what you said? Perfect, sir. Okay, 3 by 2. Oh, and by the way, let me also say this. It happened in yesterday afternoon's class, the late afternoon class, okay? After class was over with, I was checking emails, and a student had emailed me saying he had just gotten off work and tried to join the class and couldn't get in. And... I was teaching the class. I was looking at the screen. I never saw his request pop up. But periodically, when when someone, now right now it's not doing it, but once somebody comes to get in the class, what happens is down here at the bottom, 
you can't see it. Do you see the thing that says your screen sharing, stop share? Do you see that line? It's um, a little line, and the first part, half is green, your screen sharing, and the second two th or one third is stop share that's in red. Do you see that on your screen? Probably not. Uh, say again? I don't see it. You don't? Okay. I didn't think you would. Where that is on my screen, that's where someone, when they come to get into a class, that pops up, okay? And, and it says admit the student. But once I'm doing this on the whiteboard or, or wherever, when that happens, then Zoom blacks it out, whatever is written under there, and saying, move this out of the way. I can't move it. It won't let me move it anywhere, okay? And what happened, I think it must have been that he, when he came in, that blacked him out, but I thought it was just popping up and down because once it does it one time, no matter if someone's coming in or not, it just keeps cycling through, popping up and saying, move this box, move this box. Even And it gets dark and I can't write behind it. You can't see behind it because that little rectangle is there. So that's what I think happened. Now, it's happened before in some of my classes. Students have told me, somebody's trying to get into your class, and they'll usually know who it is. And I thought that was because they could see that pop up too. Like right there, you can't see that Ricky is coming in. And I'm going to admit Ricky. And from now on, when that pops up, it's going to blacken it out. And I don't know why Zoom does something that's stupid, but it does. So anyway, um, Ricky, we we're just talking about the problems with Zoom and how it, you got in fine because I could see your name when it popped up. From here on out, this thing is going to pop up periodically and and black out and, and darken things. And when anyone else tries to come in, it's going to do that to them. That happened to me. I think it must have been what happened yesterday in a class because the student said he could never get in. Well, the, no one told me it was trying to get in. I couldn't see it if he was trying to get in or I didn't see it. So anyway, that was a pro problem. I was just wondering if if y'all could see any of that, but it seems like in some of my classes, some students will maybe message or, or text or do something to somebody else in the class and let them know they're trying to get in. And if you can do that, do it, okay? Because then someone in the class can tell me you're trying to get in. I emailed them back and said, try that next time. But I, I felt bad. Okay, anyway, let's get back. We're doing, uh, Ricky, bottom of page 58, example 10 in chapter 2, matrices 2.2, uh, properties of matrix operation. We're doing transpose of a matrix and we're multiplying the transpose. So we determined that matrix A was a 3 by 2 matrix. What size will its transpose be? Anyone want to hazard a guess? 2 by 3. 2 by 3. You're absolutely right. Now, the question I'm going to ask you, do you think we can multiply that matrix by its transpose? Yes, sir. Yes, you can, because these inner two numbers are the same. And what does that give you as the size of the product? Three by two. Three by three. Okay. Now, oh, yeah, three by three. Okay. Right. Now, here's the other observation with that. Anytime you multiply a matrix by its transpose, it's always going to be a square matrix. You know, there's L7s, remember? Okay. An L7, a square matrix. And what we're going to learn is a special kind of square matrix. So let's go on and do the multiplication. First thing you got to do is tell me what that transpose is. Give me the transpose for A. One. One. Zero. Zero. Negative two. Negative two. Perfect. Three. Three. Negative two. Ooh, negative two. Negative one. Negative one. All right. And you've already told me the size of the product. Even sort of correctly. Was a three by three. Okay. So that's going to 
are three columns and three rows. You don't have to do this. I just choose to do it because it makes it easy. This position here is the first row, first column of your product. So you'll take the first row of A times the first column of A transpose. I'm going to go and write this down. This matrix here is A transpose. A superscript T means transpose. Okay, so first column by first row. What would that be? Anybody? One times one is one. Got it. Three times three is nine. Right. So A equals ten. Ten. Perfect. Okay, this entry here is still first row, but now second column. So we'll again use the first row of A, but now the second row column of A transpose. What will that product give us? One times zero is zero. Right. Three and negative two is negative six. Right. So that's negative six. Next is the first row, third column. So again, we'll use the first row of A, this time the third column of A transpose. And what does that give us? One and negative two is negative two. Plus negative three is negative five. Negative five. Perfect. Now we'll move to the second row, first column of your answer, your product matrix. So you use the second row of A times the first column of A transpose, and that would be what? Zero and one is zero. Negative two and three is negative six. Negative six, perfect. Then we'll do move to the Second row, second column of your product. So we use the second row of A times the second column of A transpose, and that gives you zero and zero and zero. Negative two and negative two is four. Four. Got it. Then we'll move to. Oh, here comes. Oh, it didn't block him out this time. Maybe that only does it when I've got PowerPoint running. But Emmanuel is here, and ding, 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 we have perfect attendance again today. Way to go, team. I was bragging on you to my boss. Um, it must have been last Tuesday afternoon. Last Tuesday, both my classes had perfect attendance in morning classes. Of course, they're both small classes, not quite as small as this one, six and four. Uh, but perfect attendance in both. And then in the afternoon class, I... Everyone had been to class was there again, so I had basically perfect attendance. So it may have been the next morning after that. Um, no, I didn't talk with him that next morning. It must have been that afternoon, and I was bragging on that, that uh, the attendance had been much better this summer than it was the end of spring. So I'm glad. All right, we're moving now to the, we're doing the product of a, uh, bottom of page, Emmanuel, uh, I hope you're hearing us now. We're doing example 10, bottom of page 58, uh, chapter 2, matrices, section 2.2, uh, properties of matrix operations. Example 10 is the last one. We got, they were given the example, the matrix A, and we were told to multiply A by its transpose. So we came up with what its transpose was, what size A and its transpose were. We noticed this came out being a three by three matrix. Uh, and my observation to you were was that all products of a matrix times its transpose will always be a square matrix. Now, if you had multiplied the other way, a transpose times A, you could still do it, but then that would have been a 2 by 3 by 3 by 2. The 3s go out, and you'd wind up with a 2 by 2, which is still a square matrix. Different size square matrix, but still a square matrix. So let's continue. We are on, we have done the first five entries. The sixth entry is second row, third column. So we use the second row of A times the third column of A transpose. And what would that give us? I put everybody to sleep with my long talk, didn't I? Mm -hmm. 
doing the last, the last row or the last Okay, entry? I was doing the second row, third column. Oh, okay. Second I already went ahead and did the last one. I thought, I oh, know. you're already way ahead of us. Okay. <laughs> All right. Did you get a two for the two, three entry? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, so let's move on. James already is impatient with my talking, so he moved on to here. And this is the third row, first column. So it would be the third row of A times the first column of A transpose, and that would give us a... Negative two and one is negative two, negative one and three is negative five. Got it. Okay. And then the three, two entry here would be third row here, second column here, and that would give us a two. Two. And then the last entry, third row, third column would be third row of A times third column of B, and that would give us a five. five. Now, is there anything else special about this square matrix, which is the product of A times its transpose? Let's see. Look at these two numbers. They're the same. Look at these two numbers. They're the same. Look at these two numbers. They're the same. What do we call a matrix that reflects itself across the main diagonal? Call it a symmetric matrix. If you turn back, can't remember where that came up. It wasn't too long ago. It may have been in a problem set. Seems like maybe that's where it was. But I can't find it easily now. But we have run into it before. Yeah, well, no, I was thinking of a diagonal matrix. Maybe we haven't. I thought we had. But anyway, it's a symmetric matrix. Anytime the off diagonal elements mirror each other, um, 1, 2 is equal to 2, 1. 1, 3 is equal to 3, 1. 2, 3 is equal to 3, 2. All the non-diagonal elements will show up in pairs. You just reverse the entry addresses, and they're always the same. That's called a symmetric matrix. Notice the diagonal is not in that picture at all. It can be any set of numbers in the world. Okay, I will say that maybe not any set, but they don't have to match or anything else about them. But the off diagonals, those are symmetric across the diagonal. Okay. I know we've hit it somewhere. Now, there's another linear algebra applied at the bottom of page 58. I don't want to make too big a deal about it. Um, but they're talking about internet search engines. What company? was founded, basically, prospered, basically, on the fact that it developed the fastest at that time, and maybe still, and most efficient search capability. Anyone know what company that was? We actually use its name of the company as if it's the first name of the full name of a search product, and the last name of that search product is search. That probably was not a very good clue. Have you ever heard anyone say Google search? Google developed, and there are two founders. There are two friends who are founders. One of them is a superior programmer and the other one's sort of a visionary type person. And between the two of them, they came up with this technique, which is very proprietary. I don't know if anyone's figured it out yet of how they did their searches, but they were able to outsearch anybody, anywhere, anytime, any speed. They beat them 
the pants off of them. And that's how Google got its foot in the IT door and it's never removed it since. So a Google search. Uh, and nobody knows exactly how they do it, but I tell you what, guaranteed it uses linear algebra. All your searches have to. So, um, and by the way, what I said before, uh, the property of example 10, that uh, the product of A times its transpose is symmetric, so is the product of A transpose times A will be symmetric. They're not going to be the same matrix answers, though, because if they're both rectangular matrices, the, the products are going to be different sizes. So certainly they wouldn't be the same. Now, if there were two square matri matrices and you multiply them either way, I can't say for sure if they're going to be the same or not. It seems like they're still not, but they would it would seem like they'd be much more likely to be. So that finishes 2.2. .2. Any questions on 2.2? .2? All right. Homework exercises. Some of these are repeating, but some are not. Any of the odds, 1 through 5, they're all found at calcchat.com. Any of the odds, 7 through 11, all found at calcchat.com. Do 13. It's found at calcchat.com. Any of the odds 15 to 21, all at calcchat.com. 23 should be at calcchat.com. 25 and 27 and 29, all three of those should be at calcchat.com. Any of the odds 31 to 35, they should be at calcchat. 37 and 39 should both be at calcchat. Either 41 or 43 should be at calcchat. 45 or 47 should be a calc chat. They claim 47 might need a utility to help you. I think you could do it. It might be long, though. Okay. Uh, 49 or 53. And by the way, that's about where we pick up the new ones. Um, we had done through 43 before. This time we pick up 45 and or 47, both at calc chat. Other new ones here would be 49 or 51. They should be at Calc Chat. Now, we haven't done an example like that, but you should be able to do it. Uh, start working on it. You don't have to multiply those 16 times. You'll see the pattern earlier. So try to do 49 and or 51. 53 should be at Calc Chat. 55 should be, it's a true false question. It should be at Calc Chat. And 57 should be. Okay, 59 should be a calc chat. That's a polynomial function, which we kind of skip those at the end of chapter one, but you might still be able to do it. So I'll let you decide on that one. Uh, now comes the proofs. The following are all proofs or what we call guided proofs. Any of the odds, 61 through 69. You can do any or none of those if you'd like. All of them if you like. I don't care. You can do those. Then you got either 71 or 73. And again, there is a new term. We already talked about what a symmetric matrix was, and this may be the problem I was thinking of. There's also something called the skew symmetric okay, matrix. They give the definition of it here. Uh, and that's when the transpose is the opposite of the original uh, matrix. Okay, that's called skewed symmetric matrices. Okay, 75 and 77 are again proofs, and they should be at Calc Chat if you choose to do those, and 79 uh, should be at Calc Chat. That's the last in the 2.3. So now we're moving to a new concept. This is on matrices, and this is not really a property of a matrix, but it's an operation you can do to a matrix. And that is finding its inverse. Now, if you go back, way back in time, when you were probably in kindergarten or elementary grades, 
after you learned to count, sometime or another you learned to count, and after that they started you adding, right? Oh man, you had to memorize all these addition things. Well, as soon as you thought you had it done and thought, oh, I'm almost through with math. Okay. No, 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 no. You did subtraction, which undid math, math uh, addition. Well, when you finally got that net knocked, you thought, okay, now, no, you're not through yet. You had to do multiplication. Okay. Which, by the way, was repeated addition, but that's beside the point. Okay. Then you did multiplication, thought, well, I'm finally through with that, but no, they turn around and undid multiplication with division. And then much later in life, probably junior high to high school, you finally got to raising things to powers, which by the way is repeated multiplication of the same numbers, That's raising something to a power. Well, when you finally got that knock, it was probably a while, but then you learned to do roots or radicals and that undid powers. So in every circumstance there, you did an operation and then you did the inverse operation. You did something that undid what you previously did. Okay. In pre-calculus algebra, you learned about functions. And then at some point you turn around and learned about the inverse of a function, which undid what that function was doing on certain functions. Not all functions could have inverses. Okay. All numbers you could add, subtract, multiply, divide, except zero. Remember, you couldn't divide zero. All numbers you could raise the powers and take radicals, except you could take the radical of negative numbers. So there got to be little exceptions here and there of inverses, but by and large, you could do it with most numbers. But with functions, there were only certain functions you could take inverses of. Okay, there were some restrictions, but once you met those restrictions, it was all pretty much the same. Well, now in matrices. Well, and then let's go on to calculus. In calculus, you learn how to differentiate. That was Cal 1. And right at the end of Cal 1 and beginning of Cal 2, you learn how to undo differentiation. We actually call them antiderivatives. That was an integral. Okay? So even in calculus, you learn to undo things. And the fundamental theorem of calculus, one of them anyway, says if you integrate a perfect derivative, you get the, the answer plus some constant c. You get whatever was in that integral. One thing undid the other. Or if you take the derivative of an integral of, of a function, you get that fu same function out because the derivative undoes the integration. So you did it in calculus. You did it in trig functions. You did uh, sines, cosines, tangents. You did inverse sines, inverse cosines, inverse tangents that undid the process. You take the sine of an angle, you get a number. You take the inverse of that number, you get the angle. Okay, that's what the uh, trick functions do. So all over the place, you've been dealing with inverses. So now we're going to do the inverse of a matrix. And here's why kind of we'd want to. Let's go back to linear algebra in one dimension, not three by threes and so forth. What if you had, here is the example they give in the book, or the illustration they give in the book, AX is equal to B. A simple one stage, one step, however you call that, algebraic equation. How do you solve this for X? Because you Multiplied a by x, if you divide ax by a, you undo that multiplication. But if you do it on the left-hand side, you have to do it on the right-hand side. So sure enough, x is equal to b over a, which you could also write as the inverse of a, the multiplicative inverse, a to the minus 1 times b. Now, that minus 1 is a multiplicative inverse. That means divided by. So anytime you have a number or a variable representing a number and you have a minus something, that means move it into the denominator and you lose the minus sign. If that had been a minus 7, move it down here and it would be a to the 7th. Okay? If there had been a minus 7 down here, 
move it upstairs, it becomes a to the seventh. Okay, so when you move it across the dividing line, you have that. So there is the answer x is equal to a the inverse of a times b. So that's called the multiplicative inverse. Okay, now. Let me ask this again. I know I've asked it every time. I think I know the answer. Do all of you have books now? Yay or nay? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. All right. Anyone who does not have a book? Okay. I guess that means nobody. Okay. Never mind. All right. In your book, middle of page 62, there's a definition of the inverse of a matrix. Now, I could type it out, write it out or something. There it is. If you all have your books, hopefully you can see it and read it, and it's not going to be all that important for me to type it out, okay? But here it goes. I'll read it. Now, one thing, first thing to note, if you're talking about a matrix having an inverse, that guarantees right there just to talk of it, you have to be dealing with a square matrix, L7, a square matrix, an n by n matrix meaning a square matrix of, the, of uh, degree n, or, excuse me, sorry, dimension n, uh, is invertible, meaning it has an inverse. Another word for that is non-singular. Now, why they throw this in now, I don't know. They don't really use that term much yet, but later they probably will, so they start throwing it in now. Invertible is the same as non-singular. Singular would mean non-invertible, okay? We're not going that way much, but, well, we will start. So, a square matrix, n by n matrix A, is invertible when there exists another n by n matrix. It has to be the same size, B, such that here is the catcher, okay? I'm going to write this part. Now remember, A and B are both the same sizes. And if AB happens to be equal to BA, and both of those products, now remember, most of the time, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Most of the time, even with square matrices, most square matrices, AB is not equal to BA. Most matrices, that's true. But remember when we did this, I said, except for some very special occasions, special exceptions. And those are going to be important here. At least one of them is. If you have a matrix B, same size as matrix A, and you multiply A times B, and you get the same answer as you get for multiplying B times A, this tells you it's a special matrix if this is also true about that product. If that product is the identity matrix of degree n. Remember we said A has to be n by n, B has to be n by n. So if the product turns out to be exactly your identity matrix of that same size, n by n the identity matrix. <coughs> I'm sorry. For some reason, my throat is clogging up. And part of it is what I did this weekend. I was in dust. I was in grass clippings. I was in straw. There was just, it was a mess of what I was breathing in as I was mowing and doing other things with that. Uh, and so <clears throat> I need something to, to loosen my throat. I'm going to try a little carbonation. I'll get by without <clears throat> doing much of that. But not only my throat, my head sort of clogs up, my eyes get so dry that I guarantee you before this is over with, I'll be rubbing my eyes too. And I was in this morning's class and I am now. Now, so this is your identity matrix of size N. Can someone tell me something about an identity matrix? Describe one for me. What does an identity matrix look like? Of 
first places. Identity matrices are always one. That's why they're like <laughs> some like, like um three by one or something. Okay, no, okay. Now, identity matrix always square, L7. Always right. square. Okay? And now when you said the one, I thought you had it nailed there. Ones are down the main diagonal. Always. Right. The main diagonals are always one. And how about everything off the main diagonal? All zero. That's what our identity matrix is. So if n happens to be a 3, i sub 3, that would be a 3 by 3 identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Main diagonal is 1. Everything else is a 0. Okay? So, for i sub n is the identity matrix of order n. The matrix B is the multiplicative, but most of the time we'll just say inverse of A. The A matrix that does not have an inverse is called a non-invertible matrix or a singular matrix. Now, if you go back up here and you talk about the product of A times its inverse, which is 1 over A, what do you get? Now, this is strictly multiplicative. What is that answer always? Always. One. Exactly. Well, in a matrix, if a matrix A has to be square, if it is square, it has and, and does have an inverse, say B, if it does have the inverse B, and by the way up here, if you multiply 1 over A by A, it's still 1. If you multiply A times B or B times A, if those are inverses of each other, the, uh, the result is going to be the identity matrix I, which is all 1s down its diagonal, main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Now, a non-square matrix, a rectangular matrix that's not square, cannot, does not, will not ever have an inverse. Cannot happen. Okay? Because if you did try to multiply it, first, B would have to be the same size. And if you multiply it an M by N by another M by N, you can't do it unless M's equal to N. They've got to be square. Okay? Now, not only if A does have an inverse B, the question might be, well, does it have several inverses? And the answer is no. And here it is, theorem 2.7, just underneath the other one, and that is here in your book on the same page we were on. I'll try to pull it away a little bit. Okay, there it is. There are 2.7, and what it says, if A is an invertible matrix, so A does have an inverse, then its inverse is unique. Once you find that B, don't look for any others. There's one and only one inverse. The inverse of A is denoted by, just similar to what we did before, if this is A, its inverse is A. Up here, a to the minus 1 meant 1 over a. That's not what we mean here. Okay? Just like the inverse of a function. Remember? The inverse of 4x would be x divided by 4. Okay? Well, the 4s are inverted. But if you had something like, well, sort of, you would think of that. But if you had a more complicated function, um say, one-fourth of uh, x plus 7, you're going to have a 7 multiplied, not divided, and somewhere you're going to have a 4 subtracted, not added, 
but it won't be in the same order or way in any way whatsoever. So just like the inverse of a function is not one over the function, no, okay? The inverse of the matrix is not one over a matrix, the, the original matrix. We don't even know what that means, okay? It means uh, the inverse, okay? Now, here's how you do some of those kind of proofs, okay? First, they said if A is an invertible matrix, once they said that, if A is an invertible matrix, that means A invertible. I'm just going to say IMV. If A is invertible, I'll say I'm trying to write really poorly. Okay. I'm not trying to write poorly, but I'll just do. If A is invertible, that means there does exist some A inverse. Okay. Now, They use B, so we could use B as well. Let's just call it B to do the same way the book did. Okay, B. All right. Now, that means that A times B has to equal the same size I and so you see, both of these have to be square matrices of some dimension n, so i has to be the identity matrix of that same dimension n. Okay? Now, and this up here says this is also equal to b times a. Now, our assumption here is the question, is that unique? Well, let's imagine it was not unique. That there's some other matrix, A times C, which is also I sub N. Okay? And we're assuming here that B is not equal to C. In other words, there is some other matrix C that this would work. Uh, that B is not equal to C. Sorry. <clears throat> Seems that once I start drinking, my throat said, more of that, more of that. Okay. All right. So let's say there is some other matrix not equal to B that also is the inverse of A. Well, then this would imply that C times A is that same matrix I sub N. Okay, now, how you go about proving this is, let's start with this first thing that we have, that A times B is equal to B times A. Okay. Well, let's not say B sub A. Let's just say I. Now, earlier, ah, in the last class, my eraser stopped working sometime shortly into the class. It wouldn't erase anymore, but this one did. Okay. Let's call this I. I'm not going to say I sub N. It just takes extra time to write. So A times <laughs> B is equal. Okay. Let's say that we multiply on the left by C. Well, if we multiply on the left by C there, you must multiply on the left by C here. I didn't leave enough room, but that's it. All right. Now we know from here that C A is also equal to I. Okay. From down here, we know that's also equal to your I. I'm not putting a subscript. C A is equal to I, and this times B would be equal to C times I. Okay. Now, um,
but c times i, we know that anything times i is going to be c. Okay? Well, now what that tells you, because anything that's multiplied by i is equal to itself, that means b. This is b, and this side is c. So you just negated your assumption that they're not equal to each other. You just proved they have to be equal to each other. Now that's just one proof. I'm not going to do them all, but a lot of the proofs really are that simple of each individual step. It's just figuring out the step to get it to say what you want it to say. <coughs> so I thought I'd do that one. It took me longer than I intended it to. But therefore, you can't have the assumption they're not equal and then you're proving they are equal. That means your assumption was wrong. They've got to be, there is only one input. All right, now, the next statement. The inverse of an invertible matrix is unique. You can call it the inverse, not just an inverse. It's the inverse of the matrix, okay? And then you can write it as a inverse, which is what I wanted to, to begin with. So, what we're going to show is example one. I'm going to erase what we've got here. You okay with that? All right, to erase. All right, I don't hear anything. I'm going to erase. Here's matrix A. Pretty simple little matrix A. I don't write very well, but okay, matrix A. Negative one, two. Negative one, one. Okay. First, before I go any further, do you think it might be possible for this A to have an inverse? Yay or nay? Yes. Yes. Why? It's, it's square. Oh, yeah. And you cannot have an inverse if you're not square. Now, that doesn't guarantee that it has an inverse, but I swear, if this had been a two by three or three by two or any other dimensions other than n by n, hang it up, Jack. It will not, it cannot ever have an inverse. This one at least possibly can. Now, here's a matrix B. And it is one negative two. One negative one. Now, my question to you is, is it even possible that B could be the inverse of A? It's possible because it's also square and of the same size. But the only way to prove, or one way to prove that they're inverses, Multiply them together. And if when you multiply them together, you get what? What must be the result? Zeros with one die. You got it. The identity matrix. So let's see if that happens. Let's multiply those two together. Uh, and it doesn't matter which order. So I think I'm going to be different and multiply the A on this side. Negative one. Because it should go either way, remember? Uh, negative 1, 1. Okay. Now, can you multiply those two? Yes, sir. Sure you can, because they're both 2 by 2s. And 2 by 2 times 2 by 2 is going to give you a 2 by 2. Okay. So let's do it. <clears throat> All right. This entry is the first row, first column. So we'll do the first row of B times the first column of A. You could have done it the other way. We're doing it this way too. What does that give you? One and negative one is negative one. Right. Negative two and negative one 
It's two, so he gave you one. One. Excellent. Okay. I thought you were doing all the ones for me there at once. Okay. So the <laughs> one, two entry would be what? First row here, second column there. That would be? One, two is two. Negative two is zero. Yep. Zero. Okay. The two, one entry. The second row here, first column here. And that gives you? Negative one, positive one, zero. Zero. So that's looking good so far. And the 2-2 two, two entry here would mean second row here by the second column here. And what would that be? 2 and negative 1 is positive 1. Ding, ding, ding. Sure enough, that's the 2 by 2 identity matrix, also known as I sub 2. Okay? Yep. Those have to be inverses because they produce the identity matrix. It didn't matter which order you did them. They produced the identity matrix. They did the second one. We didn't do the first one, but you could have reversed the order and written the B here and done it. You'd get the same answer. Okay. So, sorry. Recall it's not always true that AB is equal to BA, even when both products are defined. And if A and B are both square matrices and AB is equal to the identity matrix I sub N, whatever that is, however, it can be shown that BA is also I sub N. Okay? Uh, so, let's do example two. Now, this is going to be a little more involved. And unfortunately, it makes you, gives you a bad taste about finding an inverse. But we're going to show there's an easier way. So all they do to begin with, and this is the hard way to do it, but that's what we're going to show to begin with, and then we'll find the easier way. Here's matrix A. And they're going to leave it with two by two. Thank you very much. One, four. Four, not a nine. Okay. Excuse me just a minute. <clears throat> I don't know why my head's doing this to me now. <clears throat> Maybe a, possibly. I had less than 15 minutes, right around 15 minutes between classes. So I went downstairs and I ate a bunch of salty almonds, not really salty, slightly salted almonds, but they still had salt. And I bet you <clears throat> that has dried me out some. So sorry about that. I wish I hadn't done it now. So one four, negative one, negative three. There's your matrix A. What we're trying to do is find this inverse. Okay. Now, what do you know about its inverse? Anything right off the top? It's going to be a two by two. You got it. It's going to be a two by two, and that's about all we know. So let's just name those elements. And they just happen to choose the variable X. You could have chosen a, but that might have been confusing, or B, that might, that would have been okay, but they chose X. So the first one we're going to say is X sub 1, 1, because it's the X that goes in the first row, first column. This will be X sub 1, 2, one, two because it goes in the first row, second column. This would be X sub 2, 1. It's supposed to be a two. It sure doesn't look like it. I'm going to blame it on my right finger. I don't have good control of right hand at all. Okay. X sub. It's still not very good. Two, one. And this one would be X sub. Two, two. Two, two. Now what? 
I'm wondering is how in the world. Yeah, I see a two there, but boy, that sure doesn't look like that. All right, but just keep in mind what they are. Well, let's multiply those two matrices because they're both two by twos. That will give you a matrix that is two by two, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's multiply. The one one entry would be first row here times first column there. That would be x sub one one plus four x sub two one. Yeah, I can't get my pen, but right there it is. Four x two one. You're absolutely right. Okay. One two entry here would be first row times the second column, which would be X sub one two. One two. You could read my ugly writing. One two plus, plus four X sub two two. Four X. What did you say you were wearing? A two two? Oh no, never mind. You didn't say that. Two, two. I can't get it to write, but that's a 2-2. Two, two. All right. The 2-1 entry would be second row here times the first column there, and that would be a negative x of 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Minus 3x of 2-1. I can't get the to get off the minus, the pin won't, there it moves, okay. Minus 3x sub 2-1. Okay. And the 2-2 two, two entry here would be second row here by second column here. And that would be a minus x sub one, two. Yes, sir. Oh, that's an ugly two. Uh, minus, I believe it is, a three. X sub two, two. There you are in that two, two again. All right. However. Okay. Goodness gracious. My knees are also aching. I'm just falling apart here. All right. Now, remember the assumption is this matrix here is your A inverse, right? Now, if that is indeed your A inverse, what does this matrix have to be? What happens when you multiply a matrix by its inverse? And it's a matrix. You got it. So this one should be and what would the that right size identity matrix be? Two by two. And what entries? One, one zero. Yep. Zero one. Zero one. Okay. Now if those two matrices are equal, that means this entry here must be a one, that entry here must be a zero, this entry here must be a zero, and that entry there must be a one. Looks like we're gonna come up with four equations with four unknowns. So let's write those down. The first one would be x sub 1, 1. It doesn't really matter. I think I'll scoot over a little way and do plus 4 x sub 2, 1 has to equal one right this entry equals that entry next entry here would be x sub one two plus four x sub two two goodness 
this is tedious. I mean, it's such simple stuff, but to write it on this screen, it's sapping every bit of energy I have from my body. Goodness gracious, because I'm so tense. Okay, this entry here has to be a zero, so let's write that down. A minus x sub 1, 1, minus 3, x sub 2, 1, has to equal 0. And the last entry here, if I can read that, is a minus x sub 1, 2, it's an ugly one two, but it's a one two. Minus x of three or minus three x of two twos. It's supposed to be a two, it sure doesn't look like one. And that has to equal one. Get that to work. Okay? Now basically we just have Two equations, two unknowns, two equations, two unknowns, different ones. So if we just take these two, the first and the third equations, add those two together, you eliminate the one ones, right? And that gives you x sub 2, 1 because if you add these two together, 4x of 2, 1 minus 3x of 2, 1, that's x of 2, 1, Add these two together, you get it equal one. So we know one entry already. Okay? Go back and plug that in, sort of like back substitution, and that would give you that x sub 1, 1 plus 4 is equal to, yeah, that's the ugly equal sign, is equal to 1. Because 4 times x sub 2, 1 would be 4. So that means x sub 1, 1 is equal to negative 3. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. So we got x sub 1, 1 and x sub 2, 1. Let's go down here and do almost the same thing. These two add to 0. These two add to x sub 2, 2. And we see that equals to 1 because 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay. And let's go back and plug in either one of these. Let's do this one this time. Minus x sub 1, 2 minus 3 times x sub 2, 2, which would be minus 3, and that would equal 1. Okay? So that means that minus x sub 2, 1, 2, this is not writing well at all, Skipping, okay, uh, is equal to 4. When you add 3 to both sides, you get 4. But x sub 2, 1, 1, 2, I can't. <laughs> yeah, where's the cursor? Is it, there it is. It's not moving. There it is. Okay. Oh, this is frustrating. That means that x of 1, 2, because negative x of 1, 2 is equal to 4, x of 1, 2 has to equal negative 4. Okay. So now we've got our four entries. x of 1, 1, I'll do it over here. x of 1, 1 was negative 3. 
x sub 1, 2, if I can read that, was 4. No, was negative 4. Okay, x sub 2, 1 was 1, and x sub 2, 2 was also 1. All right. Now, I want to do a real quick check and see if that's true. Let's just multiply these together. 1, 4 times, you know, First row, first column, first row by first column, be a negative 3 plus 4 would be a 1. Sure enough, that's right. Next one would be this times that. That would be a negative 4 plus 4 is 0. That works. Then you do second row, first column, positive 3 minus 3, that's 0. That works. And then second row, Second column, that would be plus 4 minus 3 is 1. Yeah, that worked. Those are the inverses of each other. And you ask yourself, man, do we have to go to this every time? The answer is no. There is a simpler way. Okay? But anyway, in the book, they have the inverse to be uh, negative 3, negative 4, 1, 1. Perfect. Now, this is going to ask you to do a little bit of an imagination here, okay? I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible, okay? Now, if we did, just like we did, these two, this equation here, that equation there, and we combine them, okay? This would be in a matrix of 1, 4, 1, negative 1, negative 3, 0, okay? And if you've done Gauss elimination, which is exactly what we did, you come up with your solution, okay? So, what you did was a row reduction of this here. 1, 4, 1. That was the constant over here. And this is a negative 1, negative 3, 0. That was that equation. Okay. Then the next equation was this one. Look at this. These and that one. That's exactly what we did next. If you wrote the row reduction on that one, that would have been a 1, 4, 0. And this would have been a minus 1, minus 3. One, and that's what you did. Well, guess what? These coefficients are the same. Only thing that changes is these two. So guess what we could do? Rather than augment the matrix with first these values and then with these values, why don't we just augment the matrix? Our coefficient matrix A, augment that with and by the way, what is this? 1, 0, 0, 1. That's your identity matrix of the right size. So this would be 1, 4, 1, can't get my pen right, 1, 0, Okay, my eyes are getting so dry, I can hardly focus on that. 
I want to just go stick my head in a sink full of water just to add moisture to my eyes. Let me get another sip of water. No reason that should help, but let's just imagine it would. And this one would be a minus one, minus three, zero, one. Minus three, minus, minus one, minus three, zero from here, minus three, minus one, one from there. Well, what have you done here? You augmented the matrix you were looking at. That was your matrix A with the identity matrix and then did a row reduction. Gauss-Jordan elimination. To get this to look like your identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1, this thing right here then became your inverse matrix, negative 3, negative 4, 1. That is indeed what we just did. So written in another way, if I could find my cursor, where is it? There it is. Okay. So what we did, we augmented the matrix A, I, did the row reduction on it until it came out I. And what we wound up over here was A inverse. And that's just A inverse. Okay. Um, so that's indeed what we did. All right, so <clears throat> here's <clears throat> the block on page 64 that I'm going to be reading to you. So find it in your book. It's right there, that block right there, okay? Finding the inverse of a matrix in gauss jordan elimination, okay? Here's what we do. Let A be a square matrix of order N. Got to be square. Okay? Square matrix of order N. Now, write down an augmented matrix, which has that matrix at the beginning and the properly sized identity matrix right next to it. It's going to be an N by 2N matrix because it's got twice as many columns that consist of A on the left, the identity matrix on the right n by n identity matrix okay and that process as i've said before is called adjoining back when we were doing equations we took the coefficient matrix and adjoined the constants to it remember now we're doing the matrix that we are looking for the inverse adjoining to that the properly sized identity matrix okay if possible row reduce okay do your row reduction just like we normally would do, trying to get it to reduce row echelon form, in other words, Gauss-Jordan form. Uh, now, if you turn out with a, an identity matrix on the left here, then what you wind up with there is your inverse of A. If you do not turn up with an identity matrix here, that means the matrix doesn't have an inverse. So if you want to turn out with a row of zeros or something else that's squirrely like that, that cannot be changed into an identity matrix, hang it up, it doesn't have an inverse. Okay? Now, that would mean the matrix A was non-invertible, or another word for it is singular matrix. Now, like we just did, after you do it, check your work. Do the matrix multiplication of this by the, what you're suggesting is the inverse. See if you get the identity matrix. If you do, you got it right. Now, there's another linear algebra applied here. Uh, this is Hooke's Law. Uh, and this is talking about a flexibility matrix versus a stiffness matrix. Now, if any of you are going into mechanical engineering, I bet you you'll run into those kind of terms. You know, possibly civil engineering, you'll run into those because they're talking here about things such as suspension bridges and things like that as well that deal with flexibility or, or, or uh, 
stiffness, okay? And they are going to be the inverse matrices of each other. So that's how that's brought into play here. Now let's do example three. This is found on page 65 of your text, but it's also found at LarsonLinearAlgebra.com. So if you want to see and hear how they approach it, certainly go there. And you can compare that with what I am. So here is the matrix we're looking for. All right, to clear this off the screen. No problems? Okay. So here's matrix A. Oh boy, this is a three by three. Here's matrix A. It's going to be a three by three, one, negative one, zero. Okay. One, zero, negative one. Okay, negative six, two, three. Okay, now find the inverse. Rather than writing anything else down, um, what would be the next step? Augment or adjoin to this matrix what? Help me somebody. I did the first row, so I'm gonna give give me the second row. Zero, one, zero. Perfect. And Zero, zero, one. Got it. Yuck, that's a lousy zero. Okay. All right. And now we're going to proceed with row reduction. Not with a single augmented, but a triple augmented matrix, you might say. Okay. We're going to do all the rows. Okay. What do we want first? Zeros below. Okay, a one in the upper left. You always need that first. We got it already. We want zeros below it. So what are we going to do to row two to get a zero here? Multiply row one by negative one and add it to row two. Perfect. Minus row one plus row two. This is so tedious writing. Okay. So this will produce... By the way, <clears throat> here's my throat going on me again. By the way, what was I going to say? I don't remember now. Okay. Since we're using row one, write it down. This is the tediousness of matrix operations. One, minus one, zero, one, zero, zero. Okay, now we're going to do what it said. Minus row one plus row two. What does that give us? Zero. Zero. One. One. Negative one. Negative one. Negative one. You're stuck, aren't you? Okay. One. One. And zero. Zero. Come on, move, Pen. Okay. Goodness, it won't write. There it is. Okay. I don't know. I feel like I need to get up and do side straddle hops or something. Just my, my fingers are. Well, and that's the other thing from this weekend. Boy, did I use my hands a lot. So there, I'm an old man. They get stiff, and I'm holding them very tense doing this. But that's enough of my crying. Okay, let me get rid of that mark that I couldn't get it to 
do. It's not a minus sign there. Look at that. It's nowhere close to that. Okay. I'm missing my other computer badly. Okay. Uh, James, you probably saw the YouTube videos when I had a stylus and was able to write. It was so much faster and neater and everything. It wasn't very neat. But anyway, what do we want next? We got a one here and a zero below it. We got a one here. We want that negative six to become a zero. How do we make that happen? Multiply 6 by row 1, add it to row 3. You got it. 6 times row 1 and add it to row 3. Okay. So do it to it. 6 times 1 is? 6. Minus zero. 6 is 0. Perfect. That's what we wanted. Okay, next one. Six and negative one is six. Six and two is negative four. Negative four. Perfect. Six and zero is zero. Plus three is three. Three. Perfect. Six and one is one. Six and zero is six. Okay, say that one more time. Six, six and one is six. Okay. Six and zero is six. Okay. Six. Okay, got it. You said it so fast I wasn't quite able to follow. Okay. Next. Six and zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Got it. I got that one. And then we got a one. One. Got it. Okay. Now, reading my writing, that's the hard part. So let's review what we've got. A one here, zero is above it. Just what we want. Okay. Next, the first 90 zero entry we want in row 2, and we'd like it to be in the second column too, and it is, is a 1 that's just like we want it, so we don't have to do a thing to that. What do we want after that? The 1's of, of the 1 and the negative 4 above and below the 1 be a 0. Okay, so the negative one won't become a zero, and the four, negative four won't be a zero. Okay, so how do we get that negative one to become a zero? Using row two. Add them to each other. Yes, plus row one. That's an ugly plus sign. Okay, so let's do that next. Okay. We're using row two, so let's write that down. Zero, one, minus one, minus one, one, zero. Wow, that's same frontwards as backwards, isn't it? <laughs> okay, that's beside the point. All right, so let's do what we said here. Row two plus row one. First entry. One. Second entry. Zero. Perfect. Next entry. Negative one. Got it. Next entry. Zero. Zero. Next entry. One. Next entry. Zero. Got it. Very good. Okay. What do we want to be next? Remember, we got one here. Zero is below it. Zero here. One there, zero is above it. We got, we don't have, we want that negative four to become a zero. Hold on just a minute. Goodness gracious. This is driving me nuts. All right, <clears throat> so we want that negative <clears throat> four to be a zero. How do we make that happen using row two? Multiply positive four by row two and add it to row three. Got it. Four row two 
plus row three should give it to you. So let's see what happens. Four times zero is? Zero. Okay, so that gives you a zero. Four times one is four plus minus four is? Zero. Zero, that's good. Four times minus one is? Negative four. Plus three would be? Negative one. Negative one. Next? Two. Okay, two. Very good. Next? Four. Four. And finally? One. Got it. All right. All right, quick review. One here, zero is below it. One there, zero above and below it. What's the next thing we want to happen? The negative one. That, um, negative one, we want to be a? What's it called? Positive one. Positive one. So how do we make that happen? Divide by negative one. Or multiply by negative one. Whichever, yeah. okay. How about this? Just change the signs of everything in that row. Make that a plus, make that a minus, make that a minus, and make this a minus. That works, doesn't it? Now, I didn't have to write a lot down, okay? I'm all in favor. Okay, what's the next thing we want to happen? We've got one here, zero below, one here, zero above and below. Now we've got a plus one here. What do we want to happen? Zeros above it. Zeros above it. How do we make that first negative one become a zero? Add it to row three. Yeah, row three plus row one. I can't get it to write. So it's hard to read. Okay, just add them together. And that's going to, and let's see if I can squeeze it in here. I don't know why I'm in such a mess to squeeze it in, but somehow it seems like the right thing to do. Okay. So we're using row three, which is zero, zero, one, negative two, negative four, negative one. Okay, I hope I got that right. Let me just check. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, we're adding row 3 to row 1. What will that give us? 1, 0, 0, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1. Okay. What's the next thing we want to happen? We got a one here. We got a zero up here, but not a zero here. How do we make that happen? Add row two, I mean row three and row two. That's it. Row three plus row two. Okay. Pretty ugly R there. Okay, that's almost as ugly. Okay. So add those two together. And what do you get? Zero. Got it. One. Got it. Zero. Got it. Negative three. Negative three. Negative three. Negative three again. He's stuck again. Okay. And negative one. Negative one. All right. Now let's see how we did compared to them. Negative two, negative three, negative one, negative three, negative three, negative one, neg negative two, negative four. And negative one. Yes, look at that. Now they can check it. So what you wind up with, since you came up with an identity matrix here that says A was invertible and this would be its inverse. So this right here, these three columns here represent your A inverse. Okay, now I'm not going to write them down again like the book did. You can look at the book and see that. That is your A inverse. If you were to wind up with a row of zeros here, stop the horses. No inverse. Okay. Um, so that's what happens if you 
don't have the numbers, you'll wind up with something that can't possibly give you an identity matrix. So that basic gonna be either row of zeros or because anything other than zeros there. Yeah. So that was example three, top uh, basically took up all of page sixty-five. Now Less, all right, for me to clear this. All right, let's do another matrix. Okay, um, so we're going to 115, I think. So, about 45 more minutes. All right, here's a matrix A. We love calling it A, don't we? Sort of like X is a variable, it's just their favorite. Okay, matrix A. Is one two zero three negative one two all right and negative two three negative two. Ugly too. Goodness gracious. Is, I get all tense trying to write these things clearly. And it just makes me ache all over. All right. Guess what we're going to do with that? I'm going to erase. Okay. Why would I do that? What I'm going to put in its place? The identity matrix, one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. Okay. Oh, goodness, I'm out of shape. So sorry. Okay, I've been eating everything I have to drink, so hopefully I can make it the next few minutes. Okay. Now, what you want the first thing to happen? One in the upper left corner. We got it. Oh, happy campers. Okay. Now, what do we want after that? Zeros below it. Zeros below it. Okay. How do we get that three to become a zero? Row one times three plus row two. Not, not three. Negative. Negative three times row one. And then add it to row two. Pretty ugly writing. If you can read that, good luck. Okay. All right. So since I'm using row one, I'm just going to write it down. This is the wonderful thing about matrix. You write the same thing over and over. So one, two, zero, one, zero, zero. Done. Now we're going to do the operation. Negative three times row one plus row two. What would that give me? Zero. Zero. Negative seven. Negative seven. Already not looking good. I don't like big numbers. Okay. Next. Two. Two. That's better. Okay. Negative three. Negative three. One. One. And zero. And zero. Get my pen to move. There it goes. But it won't write now. What is wrong with you? There we go. Okay. <laughs> ah. All right. What do the next thing we want to happen? 
Row one times two plus row three. Perfect. Well, that negative two become a zero. So two times row one plus row three. All right, and what does that give us? Zero. Zero. Seven. Hmm, interesting. Negative two. Interesting. Two. Zero and one. All right. Right. Now. What do you notice here? If you were just to add these two rows together, which is a legal move, right? What would you get? You get zero plus zero, zero plus zero. zero is equal to, or you might say that, negative one, one, one. Hey. You're never going to get a zero, zero, zero here in either place here to eat, to represent that because you, it, you need a one down here. You can't have the zero there. So as soon as you see that time out, hang it up singular. This matrix does not have an inverse, it's not invertible, or a singular matrix. And they actually added the two together to get that. We did it verbally, we didn't write it down. That row of zeros you would get here in the third row, the row of zeros here cannot be written as a identity matrix. So it doesn't happen. All right, now using Gauss-Jordan elimination to find the inverse of matrix for its will, uh, even as a computer technique for matrices of size three by two or larger, okay? I mean, three by three or larger. Square matrices, three by three or larger. But for two by two matrices, we've done it using Gauss-Jordan, however, uh, there is another way to do this. And this looks a little strange at first, and it is just a tad strange, because it's doing something we aren't going to do until next chapter, but it's doing it this chapter. But it's a good place to do it because it works. Okay? Now I think I'm going to go on and clear this out of the way, and I'm going to show you the technique. So let's say A is a 2 by 2 matrix. Remember, this technique doesn't work for anything but 2 by 2 matrices. Okay, here's A. Now we're going to leave it as generic as possible. So we're going to call it A, B, C, and D. All right. Excuse me just a minute. My eyes are twitching, so it's hard to focus. Oh, uh, goodness gracious. It was a great weekend, but boy, I'm regretting parts of it now. All right. Now, here is the technique we're going to do. It's introducing something we haven't done before. And this is the property, the principle of the determinant. Now, all matrices have determinants, all square matrices have determinants, okay? This is a square matrix. When you get to bigger matrices, like 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, 7 by 7, yeah. Yeah, they have determinants, but don't, don't even try this with them. Number one, it doesn't work, and number two, it's a pain. It's a huge pain. But with a 2 by 2, it works, and it's really easy, okay? Here is what we mean by the determinant of this matrix. We kind of do a cross product. Not exactly, but close. You do A times D 
minus C times B. And when we get in the next chapter, you'll see that makes sense. Now, the symbol for the determinant is, looks like an absolute value symbol. The determinant of A is not a matrix, it's a number. And that number you get from doing what we just said, AD, the product of the main diagonal in this case, minus the product of the other diagonal, the uphill diagonal, CB or BC. It doesn't matter which one you put first. Okay, that's your determinant. Okay, why do a determinant? Well, that's the first step in getting your inverse of a two by two matrix. So A inverse, I'll go and call it that, A inverse, the first part of it is going to be this. It's equal to one over the determinant of A. In other words, 1 over AD minus BC or CDB, however you want to say it. Time out. What if AD minus BC or CDB happens to be 0? Guess what that tells you? No inverse. No inverse. You got it. There is no inverse. In fact, that is the Number one thing to do with a two by two matrix, quickly look at its determinant. If that determinant is zero, write it down, no inverse. You don't have to do another thing, no Gauss score elimination, nothing. If that determinant is zero, hang it up, there is no inverse. Okay? So, but if it's not zero, any other number in the world, 4,830 pi, anything that's not zero, it has an inverse. So, the first thing you write down is 1 over the inverse. Okay. Now, the next thing you write down, and this is sort of bizarre, but it's true. It works for 2 by 2s. It doesn't work for anybody else. Okay. Now, get this. Take your main diagonal and flip them. In other words, it was a D. Now, you write it as a D. So you exchange those two. The other two on the off diagonal, you negate them. This becomes a negative B, and this becomes a negative C. Okay? That's your inverse right there. I've just written it down, and that's all you do. <laughs> you figure the determinant, write that in the denominator if it's not zero, and then flip your main diagonal and negate your off diagonals. And you've got it done. You just write down the answer. Now, let's go back to that first one we did. Example two. Flip back to example two. One, four, negative one, negative three. Okay. What if A was, this is one we've already done, 1, 4, negative 1, negative 3. 1, 4, negative 1, negative 3. Okay? First thing you do, find the determinant. 1 times negative 3, negative 3 minus a negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4, but minus a negative 4 is positive 4, that's 1. It has an inverse. Okay, and 1 over 1 is 1. Okay, so that's the next part. 1 over 1 is 1. And then what you do next is reverse the main diagonal, negative 3, 1, negate your off diagonal, negative 4, And look at what your answer was before. Negative 3, negative 4, 1, 1. There we did it without any Gauss-Jordan elimination or anything else. 
you basically almost write it down. Now, sure, if that determinant had been a big old hairy number, uh, yeah, you're going to have fractions in it, but you can't avoid them. This one just happened to be a very simple number, one. So one over one is one, so you just write down the other one. So, let's do example five. I'm going to clear this out of the way. Is that okay? Let's do A. Here's matrix A. Boy, that's a big A this time. Okay. Matrix A is 3, negative 1, 2, 2. All right, you tell me what's the first thing we're going to do. Hint, vertical line. Um, Say again? Do the determinant of A. Yes, let's do the determinant of A. You tell me what that is. Three times two is six. Minus positive two. That is four. four. Okay, what that tells you? The determinant of A equals one. I mean, A inverse equals one over four. Okay, stop right there. What that tells you, if this determinant is not zero, it has an inverse. Guaranteed it has an inverse. If that had been zero, stop the train. No inverse at all. Okay, it has an inverse. So the inverse, then, we're like you, we're just going to do, I'm going to write it down. A inverse is equal to, what did you say the first part was? One over four. One fourth. And then the rest of it, basically, write it down and you've got it done. Two. Two. Negative, I mean. One. One. Excellent. Positive two. Right. And negative, I mean positive three. Got it. That's it. Well, if you don't like the minus or the one fourth out front, I kind of like it. Because <laughs> otherwise, everything becomes a fraction. Two over four is one half. 1 over 4 is 1 quarter. Two over 4 is 1 half again. And this is 3 quarters. Oh goodness, that's ugly. It just keeps getting worse. Okay. Now, this, you might start screaming and yelling, but get over it. Let's just check this and see if when we multiply this by that, what we get. So I think we can do that as we're sitting here, and I don't have to write anything else. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to be a two by two. Okay, first row here by first column here. Three halves minus one half. That's not too bad. That's two halves and two halves is Which ones are we are you Okay. Multiplying? Um multiplying A by A inverse. A up here oh. by A inverse down here. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. And we're doing the 1-1 one, one entry. So it's the first row here by the first column there. So that's 3 times 1 half is 3 halves minus 
one times one half is minus one half. Three halves minus one half is two halves. And that's one. Right? Okay. Now let's do the one, two entry here. Which will be first row here times the second column here. That's going to be a three-fourths here. Three times one-fourth is three-fourths minus a three-fourths. Hey, guess what? Zero. That's a zero. Now let's do the two-one entry. Second row here by the first column here. That would be minus two over two, which is negative one. Negative one. And then, I almost lost here. Yeah. Uh, 2 times a 1 half is plus 1. Minus 1 plus 1. 0 again. And then finally the 2, 2 entry. Second row here, negative 2, neg negative 2, 2 times the second column here, 1, 4, 3, 4. So negative 2 times 1 fourth is negative 1 half plus 2 times 3 fourths is 6 fourths, which is 3 halves. So negative 1 half plus 3 halves is 2 halves, which is 1. You got it. That is absolutely correct. Fractions and all, it works. All right. Oh, my goodness gracious. Let's see if we can do the B part here. Do we have time? Yes, we do. Here is the B part. And we'll use matrix B. Won't that be convenient? Okay. And matrix B will be... is 3 negative 1 negative 6 2 it would have been pretty tall if there wasn't a negative sign in front of it but never mind all right what's your first step Hint, vertical line. Goodness, that's a terrible equal sign. What is the determinant of B? Six. Minus six. Which is? Zero. Which tells you? Inverse. No inverse, exactly. Hang it up, Jack. There is no inverse. All right. Good deal. All right. That was quick, wasn't it? Let's move now to um, top of page 67. Okay. Now, the last theorem we did, oh, no, here's the theorem coming up. List important properties of inverse matrices. So I guess what I will do is write these down just so they're written down in front of you, okay? So let me clear the screen. Is that okay? I know all of you have books, but let's just get them down. Okay, here's the given. The assumption here is A is invertible. And from now on, if you see A, I, N, V, that means A is invertible. Now, what does that mean? That means there does exist a number of matrix A inverse. Okay. Now, it means several things. Number one, it means A is a square matrix. Number two, it means it's one say it's determined it's not zero. If it's a two by two matrix, it's not determined it's not zero. But it also be there does exist a matrix out there that's also n by n, square matrix, same size, 
uh, that we can call A inverse. If A is invertible, that's got to be that. Now, here's another thing. K is a positive integer. Usually we don't say anything about the sign, but this time we are. K is any positive integer. Okay? That doesn't mean it can be a fraction or a decimal. It has to be an integer. Positive integer. Okay? So that's the second requirement. Third requirement. C, on the other hand, is not equal to zero. And that's its only restriction. Not equal to zero. Meaning it can be any other real number in the world. It's a scalar. I can't write. I'm just going to abbreviate S-C-A-L. Scalar. It can be a fraction, a decimal, rational, or irrational. It doesn't matter. Any non-zero. We just don't want it to be zero. Okay. Now, that's the given. Those three features. A is invertible, which of course implies it's square, and it has an inverse. K just has to be a positive integer. One, two, three, four, five. No negatives, no fractions, no decimals. C any scalar in the world except zero. Can't be zero. Okay. If you have those conditions met, then here's what we know. A inverse exists. Now, I already wrote that down. A inverse exists. Okay. A raised to the kth power. We did that last time. Pretty sure. A times A times A times A. K times. Wherever positive number K. Okay. Okay. CA. That's some scalar multiple times A. And A transpose. That's supposed to be a capital T. Uh, it just I can't get the pen to write right. So let me see if I can erase just that part without destroying everything else. There we go. Okay, let me try it again. No. There we got it. Now. What I was going to say before is that A inverse exists, A to the kth exists, C times A, of course, exists, and A transpose exists. But not only that, it's not just that they exist, is that these are also invertible matrices. All of those are also invertible matrices. Every one of those. The inverse of an Invertible matrix is invertible. The multiple of a invertible matrix is invertible. A constant times a, as long as it's a non-zero constant, times an invertible matrix is invertible. And the transpose of invertible matrix is also invertible. That's what that means. Not only that, but then the following features of those are also true. And here's the first. And this should be, hopefully, close to being what they call intuitively obvious. Okay? We said that A inverse is invertible. So that means <coughs> that A inverse has an inverse. Now, this next statement tells you what that is. Anyone want to make a guess? A. If you invert an inverse, you get the same matrix you started with. Start with matrix A, take its inverse, you get A inverse, then take A inverse as inverse, you go back to getting A. Okay? So there's the first one. A inverse, the inverse of A inverse is A. Here's the second one. Now this one may be a little more involved. It takes more to write it anyway. If you take that A 
Now this said, a to the kth power is invertible. So that means here's a, and here's raising it to the kth power, and that the inverse of that does exist. That's what this says. It does exist. Now, let me tell you what the value is. That would be the same as a inverse times a inverse times a inverse that's a one there sorry times dot 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 a inverse And you do this k times. Just like k is the product of k factors of a, a to the kth is, this is a inverse. Times k times. So that's what it's equal to. This means there are k factors here of a, of a inverse. Okay, so guess what that just said? You can exchange, if it's a to the k, now that is an exponent. That is a multiplied by itself a times, k times, okay? This is not an exponent. That means an inverse. But you can exchange the two and bring the inverse inside and put the multiple on the outside, and you get an identity. Those mean the same. Okay, number three. Okay. We said up here that c times a, if c is any constant other than zero, is also invertible. So therefore, c a the inverse of this exists. And that's what we call c a to the minus one. Now, here may be the surprising thing for you may not be it may be what you predict you do the multiplicative inverse of c which is one over c and then you multiply that by a inverse if you multiply c times a and invert that you do one over c times the inverse of a we know the inverse of a exists right and 1 over c, remember c was not 0, that was a requirement, c not 0, so you can do 1 over c. Okay? And then finally, number 4. All right. Woo. We said that a transpose is also invertible, so let's figure out what its inverse is. a transpose... has to have an inverse, it's invertible, so an inverse would be to the minus one power. Okay? And guess what? Now, up here, a to the k stood for a power, an exponent, okay? And negative one was an inverse. Now, the t up here doesn't stand for any power, that just is an operation, it's transposing it. But guess what? And this surprisingly is true, Maybe surprising, maybe you anticipate it. That's the same as A inverse, the transfer, transpose of A inverse. And sure enough, that's true too. Now they do a little proof here of which one? I think they do several of them, okay? I think they do one, three, and four, leaving out two, which might be a real pain to do. They just let you take that. But anyway, the bottom of the page there has a discovery, and we're going to play around with that. So let's see if we can get the discovery done. 
I think that's going to be all that we have time for. So let's see if we can do it. Can do it. Okay. Let's start with matrix A. Now, if we run out of time, we'll run out of time. Okay. And that's uh, matrix A is a fairly simple matrix. One, two, one, three. Okay. Now that's all we know about it. It's a two by two square matrix. Here's matrix B. Two negative one, one negative one. Right. It's also a square matrix. Okay. Now, what it wants us to do is to multiply the product of those two and then find that product's inverse. Okay. So let's first do AB. The product of AB. Can you do that? Yes. Uh, of course we can. What size will it be? Two by two. Two by two. So let's do it quickly. See if we can get it done in just a couple minutes. Okay. So first entry here, one, one entry. First row here, first column there. Right, two yes, plus sir. two is four. First row here, second column there, that would be a minus one, minus two. I think that's going to be a minus three. Agreed? Yes. Okay, second row, first column. Looks like a five to me. Is it to you? Yes, sir. Okay, and then second row, second column, a minus one, minus three is minus four. Okay, got that done. Now it says find the inverse of that. How would you suggest we do that? A, B, the determinant of A, B. Ah, very good. Okay, we're trying to get, so let's first do the determinant of A, B, and what would that be? Negative 16. Minus negative 15. Right. Negative 1. Negative 1. You got it. So what might be and what would be AB inverse? AB inverse equals 1 over negative 1. Okay, which I think is going to be a minus 1, right? Right. Okay. And then... Do, do it backwards so you get negative four. Right. Um, positive three. Right. Negative five. Got it. And four. Got it. And then when you negate all those, that gives you Plus, you got that minus one in front. All right. Four, negative three, five, negative four. Now, wait a minute. What does that? It's the same as AB, isn't it? Oh, wow. Okay. Now, what we want to do, can we do it in three minutes? Let's find the product of A inverse times B inverse. So let's first do what A inverse is. How would you do that? So I'm 
do it this way, 1 over the determinant of this. And what's that? 3 minus 2 is 1. Is that 3 minus 2 is 1, yeah, okay. So that's just going to be 1. That is a piece of cake. And then, so what we go here? 3. Negative 2. Got it. Negative 1. And 1. Okay. And then B inverse. Okay, boy, he's quick. That would be minus 2 plus 1. Yeah, negative 1, which is just going to be a minus 1. Whoops. Ooh. And that would be... Negative 1. 1. Negative 1. And 2. Okay. And then when you negate all those, you would get, now this is going with that. That would be 1, 1, negative 1, right, 1, negative 2. Okay. All right. Gotcha. All right. Now we need to do the product of those two. Do you think we can do it in one minute? Probably. Okay, let's do it quickly. Uh, this will be A inverse times B inverse. All right. Okay, let's not even do the squares. That would be 3 minus 2 is 1. Uh, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, right? Yes, sir. Uh, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And 1 yes, minus 2 yes. is minus 1? Yes, sir. All right. That's what that one is. Okay? That doesn't look very interesting, does it? Not like anything else. But... We're out of time. All right. So what we're going to do next time, we'll start with B inverse, A inverse. Okay. Multiply those two together. Let's just do it. Can't we do that real quickly? Let's see what happens when we do this. Uh, that would be 3 plus 1 is 4. That's row 1 by column 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Next we'll do row 1 by column 2. That would be a negative 2. Negative 1. That would be a negative 3. Okay. And then the next one would be row 2 by column 1. That would be 3. Plus 2, I think it's 5. And negative 2 minus 2 is minus 4. This is B inverse. That's ugly. A inverse. This is really ugly. What does that give you? Exactly what we got here and here. All right. So we sort of had done something similar to this before, but not with inverses, that the product, oh, I don't remember how that went. I think it was a product of powers. No, I don't remember. Anyway. The product of two invert the inverse of a product is the reverse product of their inverses. Okay, and sure enough, that's the case. Uh, but also, we found out that the 
uh, product of two two matrices is the inverse the inverse of a product of two matrices it looks like at least from this example is the same as the product of the two matrices we'll have to work on that one so we finished so i'm going to erase that mark we finished the discovery flip over we'll start next time with example six top of page uh, Sixty-eight. Good deal. Any questions? Sorry that ran over a little bit, but you know what? I don't think I'm going to charge you any extra. Okay, that'll be an extra three minutes, free, free, freebie. Okay. Any questions? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, your question was, what are the homework assignments? Okay, we'll go a little bit more over. Any of the odds one through five, they're all at calpchat.com. Any of the odds, 7 through 29. Now, they say 27, 29. You may need some help with it. Otherwise, try it, whatever. Any of those odds, and they're all at Calc Chat. Any of the odds, 31 to 35, they're at Calc Chat. Any of the odds, 37 to 39, they, either of those, they're at Calc Chat. Okay. And then this next one, I think you can probably do 41 or 43. They should be at Calc Chat. And maybe we'll stop there, pick up the rest of those later. Okay? Good deal. Any questions? Um, were you able to get my, receive my email on, um, I sent you chapter one homework this weekend. Okay. Uh, when did you send it? Do you remember? Um, I think it was the end of last week or the weekend. Okay. All right. Then my answer is no. Okay. Because I was out of town all weekend. I mean, we left incredibly early on Friday morning and we came back just before my 1130 class, the class you were in on Monday morning. Okay. And where I was, what had terrible internet service and had, was very slow. And I was also terribly slow, um, and I was beat. I mean, I was worn out. We worked solidly from the time we got there until the time we left, pretty much. And uh, so, no, I did not have time. And where we were, I couldn't print off anything anyway. We didn't have a printer. So, no, I haven't printed it. I'm going to try to take this afternoon to print those off. As soon as I print it off, I will send you a... Uh, an email saying I printed it and I'll grade it whenever I can get to around the grading it. I've already got a stack this big of things I did print off yesterday, but they were all from things that came in yesterday. Well, no, I think I had printed four things before we left, but those were tests from other classes. Uh, but I didn't have a chance to even grade them. So, no, sorry. But I know I've got at least one advising session this afternoon. And uh, then I've got a class this evening. So I have a little bit of time today. If I can get them printed, then I'll let you know. Then tomorrow morning, I normally have three and a half hours of office hours. The dean is called a training session for them. So I'm going to be tied up in training tomorrow morning. And then I'm in class the rest of the day. And then on Thursday, I've got classes the first two class periods here in the morning. And then... Uh, and this is the second one, so I'm going to have, except for this afternoon, and then any time I can do it in the evening, very little time to print. So I'll try to get it done. It may be next weekend. Uh, I think Friday is going to be, even though we're not supposed to be working on Friday, I'm going to be working all day Friday. Uh, I'm kind of hoping. Okay. That, yeah. Um, I also sent you an email where I worked out number nine. Yes, and I did get that. Uh, okay. That was on. Okay, I take that back. I did print out your thing. I thought I responded to you too. Uh, you're right. Now that I remember this, that was for this class, and wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's one of the ones that I have here. No, I'm sorry. Okay. No, 
Wait, I'm sorry. Another student did the same thing in a different class. She worked out number nine and then corrected it. So that wasn't you. No, I haven't printed that. When you said that, I went, wait a minute. Yeah, I did print that. No, that was another student in another class. Her name started with A also, you know. I went, whoa. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, but um, I'll try to get those as soon as I can. just wanted to make sure, like, I was on the right track or or at least close to be on the right track before I turn in my test. Okay, I'll try to get to it. Uh, like I say, I have a little time this afternoon. I'm going to try to work on that. But I don't know if you've noticed that maybe you can't hear it. All morning long, my computer has been binging when I'm in class. I think that means I'm getting more emails and more emails and more emails. So this, of course, the weekend we go out of town, I can't get caught up. That's the weekend. Everything falls apart the next week. So I'll do the best I can, but I'll try. Okay, that's all I can say right now. All right. Thank you. All right, any other questions, issues, comments, concerns? Okay, then I'll stop the sharing now. And that includes ending the Zoom before it ends. Any other questions? All right, take care. We'll see. I'll see you, Aaliyah, tomorrow morning, and the rest of you I'll see Thursday. Okay, good deal. Bye bye. Okay, good.